Howdy folks, Little John in the kitchen once again. Uh, so today we're just knocking up a uh, quick um, kit brew with just a little bit of hops. Uh, what we'll be doing today, basing on is the uh, Morgan's Queenslander lager kit. Uh, so we'll be doing that fella with a little bit of uh, a little bit of hops, just basic molten, molten dextrose. Uh, so it's going to be fairly, fairly simple. Uh, you'll see just from the first shot there, I've got two pots on the stove over here. Uh, I've got a litre of water in both, and I've just added 100 grams of light dry malt. Um, and that's going to be just for a little bit of a hot boil. And yep, and of course there's two pots, two pots for a reason, because of course we're going to split the batch. Uh, and get two things. So, before we do that, big shout out to all, all Little John's Patreons. Uh, guys, thanks for your support. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to Little John's, hit the subscribe button down there in the corner. If you like the video, you like what's going on, hit, hit the like button as well. Uh, and so if you're looking for more information, the links are all down the bottom there. That is it. Queenslander Lager, I'm doing it two ways. So I'm going to do standard batch, full strength, uh, and I'm also going to do half as a mid, so more like a Forex gold, um, as I've explained before. I'm doing the kit, the, the kit beers, A, because there's a lot of guys on the, on, like on the channel that are watching that are kit brewers, so just to um, expand some understanding of different kits. Um, and also just, you know, going back, again, going through ways of doing things and looking at, you know, different options. So, as I said, doing a mid-strength. Uh, I'm doing the brews for the father-in-law um, and, and also the brother. I don't really cook too much of these kit beers myself. Uh, I do cook a little bit, mainly just for experimenting and for videos and tasting reviews. Uh, but I don't keep for myself generally to drink um, this one. <laughs> Unless one comes up, you know, really good. But generally, I'm still doing all, obviously all grain brews for my own for my own stock. Uh, but so the father-in-law has been drinking. He's always a Foster's drinker for donkey's years. Um, obviously, Foster's becoming a bit hard to get, and when it is, when you can get it, it's become a little bit pricey uh, for some weird reason. But he started drinking Forex Gold. So I thought, okay. I want to give this, this one a go. Uh, Forex is, obviously, it's popular up there in Queensland. Uh, it's a fairly, it's a, overall, it's a little bit tastier. It's got a little more, bit more oomph in it than your standard, you know, mega swirl, your twoies and stuff like that. Uh, so, but the main, actually, the main focus is, is the old man for the, for the, for the, uh, for the mid. And the other one's going to go to the brother-in-law, so it's going more like what you'd expect to get with just a 4X straight out of the, um, out of the fridge. Uh, I am going to throw a little bit of hops in both of these. So, both pots are just coming to a, to a boil. So I'm just going to run through the recipes quickly. So, for the mid, the typical process, I'm going to batch up I'm going to get that in the sink. Got some hot water. Get it softening while I have a bit of a chat what's going on. So yes, yeah, so I'll be mixing up into the full fermenter. And I'll mix up to about um, I'll mix up to about 16, 16 litres and then split that into the two, the two 15 litre fermenters as I normally do with the, uh, with the split batches and then I'm going to add this stuff in okay so mm. it yeah could be one these measurements are for the half batch so if you do a full batch you need to double these uh, these ingredients to get a full batch level okay so on the mid strength, I will be using 200 grams of light dry malt, 100 of which is already in the pot over here, 50 grams of amber malt, 
and 100 grams of dextrose. So, I might draw more. I've got a big, big whopping bag here, which I haven't split up yet, 5 kilo bag. I suck courtesy of um, the hopping mechanism. Shout out to Kev Bristol. Uh, well, we're at Fox. Well, never. You know. The so, uh, Fox I'm using on, on the strength, full strength, also come from Kev at the hopping mechanism. Uh, he supplies quite a few of the little John Fox and malt at the moment. So, check him out if you haven't. He's got you know, good prices if you're after stuff in a little bit more higher quantity. Uh, Amber Malt the bag, that's actually from Cheeky Peak down there in Wodonga. Uh, I get a lot of my malt from Cheeky Peak as well, especially stuff, because uh, they're reasonably close by, they do good, good price and good shipping. And they do have the variety of the dry malt that a lot of places don't have. They have the amber and the wheat and the dark and the dark malt um, in good quantities, which can be hard to get. So, so as I said, 200 dry malt, 50 amber, 100 grams of dex. That gets, and should get us around 1034 as a starting gravity, uh, and should drop us to about 3.7% alcohol in the final brew. Now, I'm going to add to that some summer hops. Now, I'm going to drop about 15 grams into this liquid and I'm only going to do that for about just a couple of minutes uh, just to get a little bit of flavour. I don't want too much in these. I don't want the hops overcoming these beers because I'm trying to keep them relatively simple and to, to the core but still giving them a little bit more interest. Um, and I still want to be able to taste what the basic kit tastes like underneath. You know, if I can honestly report that to you guys. Uh, so that will be the mid-strength. And the full strength brew is going to be 350 grams of light dry malt, 100 of the amber, and 200 of the dextrose. Starting gravity about 10.44, uh, look at about 4.8% alcohol in the final beer. And I'm going to, on that I'm going to use some Vic Secret. Uh, and again, not a lot, this is pretty high after, so I'm probably only going to run maybe, I might run 10 grams of that. Now, you've got to remember these are only, these are only half batches, so you would, like I said, you'd be doubling these ingredients for a full size batch. Uh, and I think um, that's probably going to be plenty of the big secret. It's saying here it's got a 21% AA, that's huge. Um, so I don't want, again, don't want massive amounts. Now, I'm going with a little bit of amber in these, mal uh, in these brews, as I said, 4X is fairly malty. It's got a, it's got a good solid malt base. Um, and is that a little bit more bitter than most Australian sort of mega school lagers. Um, and, even, and the kit reflects that. The kit's actually 20 IBU. Most lager kits kicking around, you know, running 15, 16 IBUs. Um, some are even as low as 12 or 13. So it is a meatier sort of a, um, sort of a brew. So anyway, I'm going to uh, get this out. Normally, get this into the fermenter. Now, for the sake of this not taking forever and ever, I'm going to switch the camera off while I uh, get the tin in here and top it up. And I'll split it over into the uh, two smaller fermenters. And we'll uh, come back and have a look once I've got that happening.
as always, give this a really good pressure as you go. Get plenty of oxygen in as you go. Need plenty of air in there to get that yeast a good healthy start. And make sure you're getting all that crud off the bottom. Make sure you mix that extract really well. The yeast, will, the yeast will get to it if it's down the bottom, but it does throw your, um, your original readings out, which you know, tends to worry people if, not, if their readings aren't where they're expecting to be. So just make sure you give them that a really good mix in. So that's about 16 litres in there. I'll now uh, drop that into the uh, 15 litre fermenters. Um, that will also give that a little bit extra aeration as well, so won't hurt. Okay, now just quickly before I get that uh, go to the fermenter, I'm just going to get some of this hops on. So I've just got our bolt over here just on a gentle boil so there you go 12 grams of the summer I just just straight in and do the same with the Vic Citrus now let me just write this down Four grams of summer. And I said we'll go ten grams to the big secret on the uh, first grain batch. Now I haven't actually used big secret before on a brew, so it's a bit new to me. So I'm interested to see how this actually does go. In they go. And you're just going to let that simmer down. So in the time it takes them to transfer these over, that'll be plenty enough for them to boil. And actually, they're both out of boil. I'm going to turn them both off now and just let them sit and steep. Just dropping into the uh, 15 litre. One's done. And the hop and malt over here, they're just, uh, just sitting and steeping. No problem. So both transferred over. Got a little more in this fella. That's all right. Uh, doesn't really matter. I'll just top it a bit less. So what I want to do now 
just to make life easy, is to put our extra malt just into these pots in the hot, hot water and just mix it up. Now, they're a bit light on, but they'll be fine. So with the middle, I need 100 grams, another 100 grams of light dry malt. Straight from the bag. That's pretty much spot on. And I want 50 grams of amber. If you've never used amber, amber malt in a brew, give it a go. It works really well, especially when you're doing, um, when you're just doing extracts and you're not, you don't want really to go into doing partial mashes or steeping grain. And using some amber or some dark malt, it's a really good way of increasing your flavours without having to worry about the grain. Because um, it's giving you the same effect as using some crystal or some, um, yes, or, or some chocolate wheats and stuff, which, um, chocolate wheats and chocolate malt and stuff like that, uh, the carrots and things. So you can get a little bit more character. Don't just, don't just stick yourself to having to use light dry malt and dextrose. Um, amber's a really good option. You haven't got to use a lot, just a little bit, so in, in this case, 50 grams in this brew, so 100 grams in a full brew. Just gives you a nice little bit extra depth of flavour. Uh, I'm going to drop 100 grams of dextrose on this one as well. Uh, it's going to prove a little bit difficult to lay out. Um, but, it's alright, I'll just go with this cup. Now again, you could just dump these straight into your mix, but, it's easier to mix it into a, into a warm liquid. Uh, it may lump up just a little bit. Yeah, as I said, it's generally easier to dissolve that in in the pot. And, and Dump that straight in. And now I'll top this one up. So, I said it's half a full batch, so we want to go to 11 and a half litres. A little bit light on with splitting that tin. So I'm actually going to take this one to 11 litres, just to allow for that. And that should balance this out. Oh, that's, that's about up there. Now, if you're concerned about leaving the hops in and you're worried you might get a little bit too much hop flavour, you could just use a little, you know, a hop bag or a hop sock in the, in the saucepan while you're doing that, while you're doing that steep so you can pull it out and just put the liquid in. Um, I find me only using these small amounts, especially in the kit, doesn't hurt to keep it in there. It um, just, does a little, just does a little bit more work. Okay, so the second one here, now I've got malt already weighed out. So I've got, that's 250 grams of malt. Add to the 100 that's already in there. And we want 100 of amber.
100 of amber, and we want 200 of dex. Now, the 200 of dex is probably a little bit more than I would normally sort of recommend. As I said, we're trying to get closer to that 4x sort of a finish as opposed to just making a beer that I'd like to make. So, um, yes, if I was doing this for me, really for myself, I would probably would have used an extra 100 gram of malt and 100 less decks. And that malt's gone rock bloody solid. Last I think. Well, not rock solid, but it's lumped up. That's not good. We'll just toss it in. The yeast will get to it. The worst it's going to do is going to maybe just throw out our. Uh, Initial gravity reading just a little bit. So, we're going to yield the top of the cellar up. And really, that was my fault. When you're putting your malt in, stir it as you go and you'll reduce that problem. I just dumped it in and it's just, it overloaded. So if you wanted, you could have just dumped that boil in here initially and then added your malt and your decks as you normally would with a you know, your standard kit for it, just mix them up. Oh. And there, most of those, those lumps are breaking down now anyway. See they're a bit cooler. Funny stuff, malt, sometimes it works with the heat, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it works with the whole, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, so they're done. I'm going to grab the uh, hydrometer. We'll get a quick, uh, quick sample on these. Sample of both of these. Let's see what we're looking at. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just going to show there, but there's just a little bit more darkness in the uh, in the full strength. Not much. You know, I was hoping it'd be fairly, fairly similar. Uh, so I'll point that the mid strength still got the depth of flavour. Okay, so that's showing about 10:30, about 10:32. So that's pretty close. We were looking for 10:34, so close enough. I'm not going to worry about making any adjustments on that. Um, tastes like wheat wall, wheat wort, which is, yeah, pretty much what you're looking at. So not surprised there. Obviously not much at the moment, it's all malt. And this fella is actually sitting about 1046. The looks of that. Yeah. Well that 
turn 46. So we've gone two up on one and two down on the other. So we'll get around that, no problem. The taster on this fella. Just a little hint of the hop there, so um, they both. Look, I think they both are good. Both I'm happy with that with that hop there. So I just want a little bit, just to you know, just on the end. Don't want too much. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now yeast, super important. We're going to talk yeast. We have, we've avoided it up until this point. Ah, uh, now I wasn't really sure how I wanted to go with these. Um, I did want to, I did contemplate actually doing them as lagers, um, given the current situation with the heating um, and it being quite cool in the garage. Um, I did want to throw just some lager yeast on, but I've actually, I haven't actually got any lager yeast sitting around, any dry stuff. I uh, would have meant doing starters and I just didn't get it, I was just too busy on the weekend to do that. So. I've just gone into this into the um, stockpile and working off what I've got. Uh, and so what I've come up with is I'm going to do the full strength with Nottingham. And I'm going to drop a full pack full packet in here, so a gram of litre. Um, this is Lalam, the Lalamond Premium Nottingham. And I said, I'm just going to drop this in dry, I'm not going to rehydrate. And on this half batch, I'm actually going to use the tip, the, the kit yeast. Now, yeah, I know. I'm not a kit yeast fan. I've got you know, I've, you've seen before, I've told you to throw it away, not to use it. Um, but part of the reason, obviously, it's a half brew. This is a 7 gram yeast, it's not 5, it's 7 grams, so. Given that this is this is white wort at 10:30, yeah, 10:32, uh, I think this is going to be adequate, and it's going to be interesting to see how the kit goes actually using the, the yeast that's provided, um, more for a good indication of what you can expect if you're not going to you know step up and pay the extra money for, for a good yeast. So that's where we are. These are going to go into the ferment fridge. at 18 degrees um, now again not really the temperature I'd prefer to do them at but, was, but the Nottingham's going to be fine at 18 this should be, this should be fine at 18 and I don't want to tie my fridge up the, <laughs> I want, to get, I want to get a brew off myself. I want to get a new, I'm looking at getting a new England IPA done and I was hoping to do that this week. Um, and that's why I wanted to put these on the bench with a lager yeast and just let them go in the cooler temp. But given that's not going to happen, I need to stick these in the ferment fridge and I need to get them in and out of there reasonably quickly. So I'm going to put them in the fridge and I'll give them about five days at 18 degrees to do their thing, at which point that will be the weekend and possibly around the time we're get, getting this New England IPA done. And when I do do it, I will just simply swap these out to finish off on the bench at ambient temperature, whatever that may be at the time. Uh, and that will allow me to get in and have the fridge for the New England IPA. Uh, so, that's where we're at. The Queenslander Lager, Morgan's Kit, done as a mid-strength, done, done as a full strength, as a normal strength kit. Light dry malt, amber malt, a bit of dextrose. Ale yeast at 18 degrees for the next five or six days. Uh, then we'll go from there. So, these will probably look about two weeks before they get bottled. Uh, then, 
you're going to need another you know, three or four weeks to um, carb up and condition before I uh, do a taste on them. So we're probably looking uh, late, you know, end of September, maybe even into October, when we're going to get a tasting on these ones. So we'll see how we go then. So that's me for the day. So as always, any comments or any questions, stick them down the bottom. If you want to clarify anything, go ahead. Uh, like I said, if you haven't subscribed to Little John, hit the subscribe button down there in the corner. Come along for the journey. We've always got something going on. Uh, and again, as always, Patreons. Cheers, guys. Thanks for your support. If you are interested in becoming a Patreon or want to know what it's about, hit the link down the bottom. There's some bonuses that come along with being a, uh, being a Patreon. And also it helps make sure Little John can keep doing stuff and playing around and doing these extra bits to help you out with your brewing. So that's me, Little John. I'm done. So I'll we'll see you again. We are drinking beer, talking beer, or we're brewing beer. Good brewing.